Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we are going to wrap up the season finale of Picard. Season 3. Yeah, but it's the season. It's it is. It's, it's the end. series. Series finale. The series finale. Yes, the, the series is over. It's kaput. It has ended. It will never be again. Supposedly. Uh, so, yes, the... I. We reviewed this part of the way through. I was pretty down on the first half of season three. I thought there was the writing was lazy and melodramatic and they and not really true to itself. It definitely got better in the second half. The second half of this season was really completely different in, in, in a lot of ways. Um, still some my biggest complaint of this season is that they went for some cheap drama. You know, they really could have. There were times where they did things just because it was dramatic, even when it didn't really make sense for the characters or the plot or the situation or Starfleet or the backstory or anything else. Yeah, it was just drama. I agree. Yeah, we, we mentioned those last yeah. time. Um, but as a whole, when I look at the season as a whole, um, my number one comment is if you are a fan of Star Trek The Next Generation, you will absolutely enjoy this season, I, I, you, think, I think you we'll have be, to see it. If yeah. you if you love next gen, you have to see this. Yeah. This is this is a wonderful send off for for the crew and this the series. And it, they did such a great job. I'm so happy with it. Uh, even a couple of roadblocks earlier on were devastating. And and I still enjoyed the first half. There was a couple of things that were annoying, but from like episodes what five, six, seven, all the way to the end, each each episode was was really good. Mm -hmm. And the ending was fantastic. Uh, I mean, it was else? good fan service. Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah, it, it was, some of it was gratuitous, but you had to sort of just accept that there's going to be some gratuitous fan service. But as fan service, it was successful. It was good. We got to see the characters. They got the band back together. Everything, yep. you know, was good. And uh, they were funny, you know, and, and yeah. it was exciting. Just and there, it, was, there was actually a point. Are we doing spoilers yet? There was, there was actually a point where, like, you don't know. You don't know if they're going to survive or not. Yeah, you know, it could, it could you could have gone either way. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. I almost was like, yeah, I, I would really. I thought it would have been really brave if they killed everybody before. The end, but that wouldn't have, that wouldn't have sat well. No. I don't. I don't know. There was no re there was no reason to kill them all because they, good the writing, good story. Yeah, but the story no. itself wasn't wasn't lending itself to that. I thought it was. That's the point. There was a point at which they needed to sacrifice them sacrifice themselves to save the galaxy. And they got to eat their, you know, have their cake and eat it too. And in a way, that's cheesy. I think it would have been more poignant if they just said, we got to take this one final hit for the team. And they did it. And then that was the send off. You yeah. know what I mean? That would have been brave. And they could have made that work. I mean, that could have been fine. Now they just fade into the sunset. Okay. That, that could have right. been, been fine. But <laughs> I think it, that happy feeling that I had at the end of this yeah. would not have been the same. Um, it, no, it, it would have been a bit more complicated. I, I know, but it was just a beautiful, wonderful way to end it. And, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll see, hum, you know, spoilers. We're spoilers, right? Yeah, spoilers. Maybe now. we'll see human data in some other series. Who who knows? Or or Worf. How about a series with Worf? Like he's he's uh, David Carradine in Kung Fu, you know, going, <laughs> going through the Federation. Worf, Worf's arc was wonderful. My favorite mm -hmm. arc. His and Data's, of course, was great mm -hmm. but Worf had a fantastic arc like the zen warrior who's mm -hmm. embracing you know peace and you know and battle i mean he, he was and fantastic death. and and <laughs> hilarious yeah he was well, he was the like one of the funniest one-liners as usual i, I totally mean, agree he was great and data he, he yeah i mean there were they did a good job of, of evolving the characters i really mm -hmm. felt i felt like they did you know they wrote that part very well um, there were some parts of the, of the season that were kind of clunky that I felt like mm -hmm. were almost too Star Trek techno babbly. You know, one comment that I, I, I was thinking about, you know, it was my comment. Mm -hmm. um, you were thinking about your my own comment. comment. Made <laughs> internally, <laughs> internally, I made yeah. to myself. I said to myself was, I would love to see a version of Star Trek that does what Andor did to Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Dirty, Get gritty. It? One notch more gritty. Yeah, yeah but, but you know... I always feel like with Star with Star Trek that things are a little like techno babbly. They make a lot of excuses for for stuff mm -hmm. that doesn't. It's not written well enough where they can they could be like, okay, we're going to write this story and we don't have to throw techno babble out there. It does. It's not necessary. We don't have to like pull a you know pull a magic trick 
to make the plot happen. Mm-hmm. Just make the freaking plot happen and, and do it write write it really well. This this yeah. series had a you know Picard in general had a lot of those Star Trek gimmies. Yeah. Which I just I don't enjoy in any version of Star Trek. It's lazy writing. So I mean, the Star Trek the original series set up a certain set of technologies. You know, yeah. we have warp drive, we have shields and phasers and tractor beams and the transporter. Yes, those are the big gimmies. And there was kind of there was a homeostasis there in terms of the technology. You knew the transporter was finicky and short range, and there were lots of situations which it wouldn't work and. You know, Kirk is about to die. Like, come on, Scotty, get me out of here. Like, there was, there was good drama. You know, I actually really like Star Trek Enterprise when it was even more primitive because then the stakes are higher and, mm-hmm. and they don't have the magic technology to always save the day. And I do think one of the wrong directions that later Star Trek, you know, episodes and series and movies and everything went in was just throwing in randomly advanced technology. The yeah. transporter is sort of the biggest one that... You know, we, we've ranted already about interplanetary transporting, which is absolute nonsense. And they did it again here yeah, with they oh, they did with the portable yeah, transporter. Did. Yes, they did. Bob, just because did. they did it before doesn't mean that it was written well when they first came up with it. You shouldn't be able to shoot a uh, transporter beam at somebody. Yeah, I mean, come it's on. not a transporter beam. It's it's a it's a um, like a an emitter. An emitter Whatever. that, 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 no, that it's, so good. It's, it's like a badge it's bad. that gets you beamed up. Okay, it's okay. Bad. How about you this? You cannot though? compare here's that the to problem, interplanetary though. beaming. But here's the problem. I, you're right. And you're there's right. precedent. It was a next but, gen. But here is the problem with the that. Precedent. Why would you ever use a phaser again? Just transport everyone away. Yeah. Then they're out. Then they're gone. You don't have to kill them. You just get rid no, of them. No, you just stun them. You knock them out. But the point is, oh wh- man, you're making a big deal of this. This, this, it this isn't. No, but that, but that is the lazy writing. Don't do it. It's yeah, a, it's a cheap, transport it's everybody a cheap to trick. the brig. I also don't I thought like it was the, a cool idea. I don't like the intraship beaming, either. Oh man, Kirk, Kirk did that back in 23, yeah. 16.4. <laughs> I mean, come on, or 22 something. Which I mean, the problem is though, you have, to, Bob, you, you have to understand the problem. The problem is that they write themselves into a freaking yeah. corner. Of course they do. And that's, and that's exactly what this, the interplanetary beaming was. These, li- these little tweaks it's, but to it's beaming all part is, is of the minor, same thing. minor. It's not minor. The trans- Compared to things- interplanetary beam? Yeah, but I, I don't care. That's a bad bar to set. That's the whole point. Just because it's not as bad as the worst possible abuse doesn't mean it's okay. It, the thing is, they... That's look, what you compared it to. The, the transporter itself is a problem. It is a plot problem. But they had it contained on the original series because it was it was just good enough to get the keep the action going. I agree. And, but it was finicky and... and you know what I mean? And that That's was fine. fine. Yeah. Now, but though, now, and they and they should have kept it there. They really should have kept it as this very difficult, very finicky technology. And once you let loose that genie out of the bottle, that transporters <laughs> can do anything. The implications are massive. What's the worst case and, scenario? Oh, I beam you away. A big deal. When it's if they want that, to, they can just they can stun they can stun them. They don't but, need to Bob, beam them away. It's not good writing though. That's the point: is they get themselves to a situation where the transporters can do so much, they can do anything. and solve so many problems yeah. that when they don't it was, use it, stop. Let me finish. When they don't use the transporter as the solution, then you're like, what the hell? I thought you could do this with right. the transporter. You can't do that. You. This is a, uh, this is that. storytelling. This is, you got mm. to pick your battles. That, that's not that's not a good battle. Well, anyway, good anyway, it is, in and of itself, it's not that big a deal. But I'm just saying, it's a right, symptom of a trend within the Star Trek right. franchise. I don't disagree with that. Yeah, of I don't over, disagree with that. Of throwing in advanced yeah. technology without thinking of the implications, and they really need to be going the other way and thinking of ways to really rein in these technologies to make sure that they are not right. You know, constantly writing themselves into corners. You know, because that's what that's then it just that's just another symptom of lazy writing. So I do think that's getting back to some positive stuff. This is a great season mm-hmm. overall. Yes, it was. It was a good. I just, agree. It was a good series end. It was a good Star Trek: The Next Gen. It was the only good season you know, for Picard. That's they crazy. kind of erased season I, two almost in this season, which is fine because season two was terrible. I, I mean, just in terms of a Star Trek season, not just yeah. Picard or Next. Yeah, just it was a, a good Star, Star Trek, Trek season. season. It was. It was wonderful. It was great. Yeah. Wonderful. Hey, hey, listen. As a fan of the Next Gen. Having them be able to coordinate getting all of these characters back together, it didn't feel that forced. It was good. I, I felt yeah. really good when they were together. It felt awesome. It felt like old Star Trek. Yeah. It was a little contrived, but you had to, you, you, had, to, yeah, you, you could had, give it. But and, it's it like, 
and it took a while. I remember complaining that like I was thinking, where's Data? Where's Jordy? Where are these other? It yeah. did take we a while. We were promised a reunion, <laughs> but you get over that. I got over that very fast because once they came, it was more organic and it made more mm -hmm. sense, and it was great seeing the gang together. But but don't forget one of the biggest characters that came back. Enterprise D. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was, that was, that was at, amazing. At first, I was like, you know, I don't need to see the Enterprise D. It's not my favorite ship. You know, I don't think it's, it's the most beautiful yeah. ship around. Um, but when they, when it came back, it, it was a stunning moment. And that ship was beautiful. First off, the bridge. How, 50 people, no, 50 people for three months worked on that bridge. There was no blueprint. You would think they go to the Star Trek warehouse. Here's the blueprint. No, they had no blueprint. Wow. They had they most of it was from scratch, absolutely from scratch. Yeah. They had pictures and they're like trying to make sure it was yeah, identical. A lot and of video evidence to go by. Imagine 50 guys for three months worked on that. And then there's the digital model of the entire ship, the most detailed model that I've that I think has ever been created. Mm -hmm. If next time you watch it, look at the windows on the ship. You it, you feel like you could look through the glass and into the ship. Yeah. Whereas mm -hmm. on any other ship you'll look at, it's just, just like white, white just yeah. white. It was beautiful. They did things like they did they did a closed camera flyby right by the uh, the uh, outside of the primary hull by the bridge. You couldn't even do that with a model. Yeah, even a right. model, you couldn't have done that. Even their best model, beautiful, they never would have been able work, to do Beautiful work, amazing work, and uh, hopefully we'll, this bridge set will be around for, you know, decades. Well, <laughs> so the Star Trek Museum, which is in yeah. upstate New York, is is building and, and oh, damn near they're fin building close to finishing. The D-Bridge? The, the, yeah, Enterprise D-Bridge. That's, oh, they bought another building right next yeah. to the one, and that's, they have another museum now. I wonder how, what plants they're using. I wonder how that's what it. I was as soon as as soon as you just said yeah. what you said. I'm like, well, I wonder where they might be doing the same thing. Yeah. 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 That would be a lot harder because for the for the classic bridge and ship, they had I think they had like the blueprints essentially mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes. They had the they had the basic blueprint for the entire set of Star yeah, Trek, the original everything. series, mm -hmm. but they didn't have down to, to the minutia. You know, like I don't think they had measurements for every jig and jag. I think they had to. Yeah, they had to finesse a lot of that. Um, and also props and all that. There wasn't like a prop list or anything like, you know, like, a, like one quick example. Um, they were able to find the same comb that, you know, Captain Kirk was using on the original series. You know, when he had that. His comb is to pay? What? Yeah, what well, they, they had some comb <laughs> that was, you know, on the set. And, and James Cauley, who owns the museum, yeah. like he, he found it. He, they, they sourced it. They figured out what it was. What they kind went, of comb are you talking it was about? Just, it was just one prop that was probably in one episode. You know, but that's but they had yeah. to do that to go. What is that? Okay, let's let's zoom in. Let's let's take yeah. screenshots. Let's figure it out. Then they go back and they 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 yeah. find out what. Yeah, it is. I mean, is it made from scratch, totally from scratch, or is it based on a product that you could have bought they, and then they got th that. Uh, this is a huge tangent. Yeah, let's, right. let's talk about <laughs> this. Let's <laughs> talk about if there's going to be a spinoff. Can't help myself. From, okay, from this series. So, well, the clearly, clearly, they set the stage, of course, for an Enterprise G. Star Trek um, Seven Legacy of Nine, series. Raffi, Jack Crusher series. It has a name, Star Trek Legacy. They, Star Trek Legacy. Even a name for it. Yeah. Uh, it it's, hasn't been announced or greenlit or anything as far as we know. It's just purely speculation. You know, I think the fans want the series to sure, happen. Sure, of course we do. And we're kind of at the point where we were, remember, yes, way Discovery. back when, when we were talking, wouldn't it be awesome if there was a Pike spinoff? And then it happened like two years later. You know, but we're kind of at that same phase. But it, the difference is, yeah, they've already built the sets. Mm -hmm. They have, they have the the uh, the Enterprise. You know, the, now it's the Enterprise. They have that set because yeah. they just shot a, they just shot a season of it. I, yeah. I doubt that it's destroyed. You know, like mm -hmm. you'd think they'd be like, we could move on this very quickly. They're, they're teed up for it already. Here's, here's my it. take. I think Paramount. I don't think they're going to do it because we've got we've got um, strange, strange new, new worlds. New worlds. You know, it's the Enterprise. It's you know, it's 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 you know, it's the crew. It's kind of the, the format that we love, but we already kind of have that. So I think they may be like, yeah, we got that. Maybe we'll wait. Maybe we'll wait. But I hope that they do take it. And if they do take it, they need it to be a different angle. You know, do something very different in terms of like what happens regularly on the show, and and don't make it a clone of Strange New Worlds. Mm -hmm. I think they could do something really special if they do something a little bit different with it. Just well, but, Strange New Worlds is a prequel, first of all. Yes. So this would be breaking new, new ground. territory, even though Discovery went even farther into the future. Yeah, don't, we, we have no idea what really happens in this time period, so they could really do anything. That is the biggest 
bonus because everything is wide open yeah. because Strange New Worlds is hamstrung. They're in a straitjacket. They could only veer off a little bit. They yeah. can't do anything too dramatic because right, they but, know but about it. This is what we want, That's though. a big bonus this, to Star Trek Legacy. This is what we want for Strange New Worlds. We want old school Star Trek beam down missions. Mm -hmm. It seems like that's what they're doing. Planet of the right? week. It usually. doesn't matter. Like they can't screw anything up. All they got to do is go to a different planet, meet some different right. aliens. It's actually a good problems. thing that they can't do. They're yeah. a little bit in a box. So they won't yeah. do the but crazy saving the galaxy. Stuff. That's why yeah. Star Trek, the potential of Star Trek legacy though, is it could write the future of, <gasps> that, of right. the franchise. Yeah. New, right. yeah, right. New aliens, new dramatic, hugely dramatic things happening to the Federation. Yeah. yeah, I want that for sure. I don't want to go back in the past more. Mm -hmm. You know, I love Strange New Worlds. They would be able I, to I show to us things. for seven years. Like, it would be cool to learn more about Starfleet, to mm -hmm. learn more about Earth. Do a little bit of more world building. Yeah, world building. Yeah, yeah they, they, imagine they, that. Yeah. So, All right, so get, Absolutely. getting back to Picard. Mm -hmm. um, All right. I admit I, I became weepy a couple of times during this, that, especially the last couple of episodes, you know, it was amazing when they got back on Enterprise. Oh D. my God! It was amazing to see all of them, you know, enjoying each other again. You know, like it was very. It felt like it felt like I was watching the TV show again. Yeah, and it reminded me. And that's of, the whole point. It is, of course, and yeah. that's what that's what that's it's the fan service. So it reminded me of something I completely forgot about about mm -hmm. all of us watching those Star Trek Next Generation episodes together every week. We would get together at our house. And watch that show yeah. together. Yeah. And we don't watch TV with people anymore. Because it's not scheduled. Right. Because the you know, it's the, not an that's event. right. It's not an event. The world yeah. has changed. And, it, and I was sitting there watching this show by myself. And I'm like, the last time I felt the vibe of this uh, show, you're right. I was with my friends and family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it, you know, I missed that. That's a good point. That. Yeah. But we could make it happen artificially. This is not make like, it so. Yeah. But you'd see if Americans are too busy. Yeah. I we know. don't have free time like the rest of the world does. We <laughs> fucking, right? It's the truth. <laughs> well, let's watch the first episode of season two of Strange New Worlds together. together. All right. Let's, I'm, let's, I'll let's do get that together. With you guys. At least the first one. Yeah. We should start a podcast where we talk about <gasps> it afterwards. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be cool. We'll talk about that. All right. So I guess we're giving a thumbs up to. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's a thumbs up. If you enjoy Picard Next Gen, three. you'll love it. You'll love it. Yeah. You can't help it. All those, the, all the actors are great. They were, they were totally acting exactly the way those characters should have been. Right. They, they none of the yeah. actors forgot how to play those characters. Mm -hmm. True. Nothing I mean, was that really kind of pissed it. me off a little bit. I mean, they, was kind of like really. You didn't tell Picard about his son. Oh, that didn't What's make any that sense. About? That yeah. didn't make any sense. Well, when, but she made up for it though when she when she was attacking the Borg the Borg yeah. Mega Cube. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a great scene where she like took manual control. And, and how everyone cool is it? Stares at her. They destroyed the Borg. Mm -hmm. That yeah. group of people who who yeah. introduced us to the Borg got to destroy the Borg. That was a, right. it was a, it was an epic. Janeway helped, but yes, I agree. But I mm -hmm. love it when when a brand has the balls to end something turn the page to yes. end something yeah. okay the, the borg, borg are no totally more. gone but yeah I yeah but you mean. know what i mean yeah i know what you mean the, the traditional evil right. borg are gone and that's Spe good speaking of that though there actually has been some discussion online of whether or not the star trek franchise should end what? and I oh mean, yeah so uh, let me tell you what? What? Yeah. so i watched i was How watching was youtube thing? videos you know, I was very sentimental after the show ended yeah. and I wanted to hear people talking about the show, right? So I'm going, I'm watching YouTube videos, listening to reviews. And this one guy literally said, you know, we've I got... I hate that guy. So what is it? He, I can't remember what he said. I think he said something like, we've had 40 years of Star Trek, right? Mm -hmm. It's It gave us, you know, basically what Star Trek can deliver and it's time to end the brand. That's it. We don't need any more. We don't need any more TV shows. Like, it's over. That's it. And I remember sitting there going... Hold on a second. Wait a second. We have a couple of, of science fiction brands were so good and so powerful, Star Trek and Star Wars, they're, and they're completely freaking different from completely each other. Completely different. And they're so good that we literally have a universe to explore in each one of them. And and Star Wars is doing it. Star mm -hmm. Wars, like with Andor, and Andor is like one of the best Star Wars, you know, things ever, ever, ever. totally, yeah. yeah. The, and Mandalorian. I mean, there's so much. Again, so I, Rogu. Th what I I agree that Star Trek needs their their Andor. They need it needs their Mandalorian. I mean, I think you know, Strange New Worlds is part of that. I would like this. The thing is. Listen, it's a fantastic franchise. There's been a lot of duds in the franchise, just like with Star Wars. You know, yeah, a lot of you know, um, 
bad decisions, bad ideas, you know, just trying to redo things. They just need, they just, they need to get good writers yeah. to get in there, to iterate the franchise, to do some ex, ex, world expansion. You know, it's a good formula, you know, Starfleet and, the, and everything is a great formula for, you know, science fiction storytelling in the future. Just, you, you know, add the right, the good writing that we need without breaking it. You yeah. know, and I mean, the thing about Star Trek over Star Wars yeah. is that Star Trek analyzes the human condition. Mm -hmm. Like I would dare say like no other science fiction story yeah, there ever. Are, there are elements to the to the franchise that are fantastic, like the competency porn, which not a lot of, you know, science fiction does it that way without being too hokey, you know, mm -hmm. like they don't have the, you know, I'm a complete nerd and I'm going to do the nerd thing, you know, kind of competency, you know, stuff it's it's people who are disciplined who are competent who you know who work really hard and they have relationships with they have other. and they work well together and they follow the rules but they know exactly when to bend them and it's you know it's right. it's it's a it's a good again it's it's a good world to mm -hmm. operate in and there's a lot of dangers out there there's a lot of things more powerful than starfleet there's a there's a lot of of troublemaking to, to happen out there it, it, the uh, the possibilities are endless but you know you need writers who uh, who know Star Trek who can appreciate what's good about it who know how to iterate it to do uh, tell a new story in the Star Trek universe while being true to Star Trek that that formula exists out there they just that's what they need to find oh and we're see, like again we're seeing it happen in other brands yeah, we're seeing it happen so it's possible I think um, we. I think you know this was a, a special thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's never going to happen again. There will no. There, you know, the, the you know the next generation is over. It's finally yeah. completely over. That's the last thing we'll see from the, from them. I'm sure. It really felt like that, right? and that's a good thing. That's you know, turn the page. You know, yeah. come give us new characters and new situations, and as you say, do something different. Uh, and, and you know, like, I, I have to say, like Star Trek: The, the Lower Decks. I've been really enjoying this oh last my season. God. It's so good. Fantastic. And because Fantastic. it's a, sort of a different view of things, it's obviously right. there's more humorous, but uh, although I still think they should have, you know, they should have kept true to the premise more, you know, and really yeah. had to be the view from the lower decks and not so much, you know, be, um, you know, inside with the bridge crew, but, uh, but still it's fine. And, and it, it, it's still, it, it, it's, that's the kind of thing that I think there's so much potential there with Star Trek. Yeah. Anyway. Right. Who would have thought that, you know, the, an, you know, an animated Star Trek would be among the best series on yeah. Star Trek series on TV. It's yeah. so, I'm laughing my ass off every damn episode and they just keep getting better and better. So what they, they found their voice, ba yep. right? Yep. They found they the way they, like, they know what's funny about Star Trek. Yep. Like and you they, watch an episode, yeah, they totally get it. They it, totally get what is, yep. what, the, what you can lampoon and, you know, right critique about star trek and they what are is funny about and it. they are fans they yeah. know it they, they have at a be. deep level yeah. they they're making references that go even over our heads like yeah. what what was that holy crap it, amazing right anyway all right more star trek but do it well i'm 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 down with a star trek legacy i love the the ship the now the new enterprise oh G. it's a great ship beautiful very yeah. cool yeah all uh, right and before we end the episode mm -hmm. i just want to say i really liked the the uh, Brit, the the captain of that Shaw, ship. Shaw, Shaw was Rock, was cool. I was yeah. sad when when he bit the dust. Good character uh, arc. He, he, was, he, had, yep. he, had, he had a good, fantastic. He was arc. a jerk character. when he came on. Then you then you understood why he was a jerk and yeah. why he yep. was mad at those. It was all perfect. And it his relationship well. with Seven of Nine ended beautifully with his recorded. It message. did. Oh, that was God. great. Excellent. It was great right at the very end to get yep. through in a little more I sentiment. It was great. I hope they time travel <laughs> and resurrect him. Hey, if you enjoy Star Trek or other science fiction universes. You should join us. You should go to Alpha Quadrant and the number six dot com where you can see everything about our show. This is a podcast as well as a YouTube show. So if you want to listen to it instead of watch it, we make that possible for you. Uh, and also, if you want to help us keep the show going, you can become a patron. Go to patreon.com forward slash Alpha Quadrant and the number six. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> Start date. <laughs> Start date 2.793. You know, they made that all up. Yeah. <laughs>